It's bloody Jacob here to bring you another movie review, and this time we're going to be talking about I Am Legend, which came out in 2007 and stars Will Smith. And I Am Legend tells the story of Robert Neville, a brilliant scientist who is a survivor of the man-made plague that transforms humans into bloodthirsty mutants. He wanders alone through New York City, calling out for other possible survivors and works in finding a cure for the plague using his own immune blood. Neville knows he is badly outnumbered and odds are against him, and all the while the infected wait for him to make a mistake that will deliver him into their hands. Jake up here, meeting my icon, Catherine Isabel here. Yeah. Yeah, I Am Legend is actually a film I uh, should have talked about a while ago on this channel. Uh, but with it, I know it's not technically a horror, well, kinda, it has to be like some kind of subgenre, right? Um, but you know, it's not like an immediate horror movie that I know a lot of people would think about. Um, but with it nearing uh, Halloween and such, uh, you know, my fiance and I were both kind of trading back and forth, you know, more genre type movies anyway. And uh, I Am Legend was one I, uh, <laughs> you know, had to go to right away. Because um, I remember seeing this one in theaters in 07, and yeah, it came out 12 years ago. Over 12 years ago now, probably. Yep. Well, actually not quite 12 years, but we'll be this December. I feel old. I feel old on the inside. And this just adds to it. Um, but yeah, I Am Legend is a pretty important movie to me, actually. Uh, you know, Will Smith's done some really good serious work. You know, a lot of people just think of him as, you know, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, you know, Independence Day, which is, you know, great for its own thing. Uh, or they think of like uh, even his recent uh, role with a uh, dead shot in the Suicide Squad movie and such. But I think uh, you know, he only did some good work in you know, like Seven Pounds and uh, Pursuit of Happiness and stuff like that. But for me, I Am Legend has always been my favorite role of his. I think is best performance I've seen. And of course, the, sto the story uh, really appeals to me as well. I yes, I did actually read the book, <laughs> believe it or not, by uh, Richard Matheson. Uh, it's one of the, I think it's one of the best books, uh, ever written. Um, not that I read a lot of books, so maybe it shouldn't fully go by me, but maybe you should also take that as a compliment to the book that I actually read all the way through it. Um, I read that quite a few years ago, actually, I gotta brush up on that, but <clears throat> the movie is different from the books, I know that. Um, there are things about the books I wish were kind of uh, a little bit more present in the movie, or things in the movie I wish were more similar to the books, back and forth. Um, but really, I think they're both great for their own things. And uh, yes, you have Will Smith in the movie as Robert Neville, who we'll talk more about again in a few minutes. But you also have, yes, Sam or Samantha the dog, played by Abby the dog mostly. Um, and that's probably the, the best dynamic of the whole movie. You know, Last Man Left Alive, Last Man on Earth, whatever you want to say. And you have, uh, you know, Man's Best Friend, right? And it really does well uh, showing the bond that uh, someone can attach to their dog, both through uh, trauma and just uh, kind of companionship and uh, closeness that, you know, type of relationship can bring in someone's life. And I absolutely love that. Uh, they, they really train the dog well if you watch... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of the behind-the-scenes features on the movie—it's um, you know pretty, uh, 
pretty meticulous with how they got got her to do a lot of things on her own. And uh, yes, the the movie is a bit more. I don't know if I want to say it's rushed necessarily because I still think it had to, did a good job pacing wise for its own version of the story. But of course, the novel goes into far far greater detail. But I still thought the movie did a good job of showing just the loneliness of it all. The uh, this the uh, mental and sort of mental anguish and the damage to his psyche that how much it was taking a toll on him I thought that did really well like uh, Robert Neville has this whole system for himself set up very again meticulous uh, very much a certain order of what he does day to day you know he has his clock set you know for uh, when best to head home and you know shut all the doors turn off the lights and everything and he has all these other little things you know to keep himself busy try to keep his mind occupied as well I thought that was all really well done. Um, and the whole time, you know, there's some levity, especially early on in the movie. Um, some of the things with the dog that are kind of all, you know, and there are different things like that, or different little bits with Will Smith where you get to see him be a more comedic Will Smith to some small extent anyway. And it feels natural, it feels organic, but at the same time, through all those little bits in the early part of the movie, he had a sense of, uh, you know, sort of dread and, you know, literal, you know, darkness uh, slowly building. Um, which I thought uh, was one of the best things about the movie, honestly. Um, from uh, you know, when they spot something, Will Smith's you know hitting golf balls, and uh, and Sam you know runs into you know these, these uh, dark buildings, and you know he knows that's where they uh, you know or they wait until uh, you know, the sun goes down, and. This is the vibe you get with those scenes in the dark. I think it was. Um, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself. I feel like it's really well done. Um, you feel like an empty sort of uh, darkness and sort of impending uneasiness <laughs> that goes with the, those scenes in the movie. Um, and probably one of the probably maybe the best scene in the whole movie is. Uh, you know, this is more of a set picture, so it's not really lit like it is in the movie, but. Uh, these things, these creatures, these dark seekers, or whatever you want to call them, they're, they are gaining sort of more intelligence. I ended up saying uh, a trap for them. That's very similar to how he captured one of them to experiment on before and, you know, test different uh, different injections and such for his cure. Um, so they trap him. Will Smith is, uh, Robert Neville is knocked out for a bit. And, uh, you know, <laughs> the dark's completely about to, you know, cover the area. And you have, like, this little little patch of light that's slowly you know fading as well and you know sam's barking at him and then the uh, this alpha alpha vent uh, i shouldn't say vampire that's something else we'll talk about but um this alpha mutant you know comes out with these infected dogs as well and the infected dogs are slowly waiting for the light to you know completely close in as well and it's one of the best scenes but it's one of the worst scenes because uh yeah, uh, in fact, the dogs run at him, uh, Sam jumps in front of him, uh, Sam is unfortunately bitten, trying to fight these things off and protect Robert. Uh, you know, Neville, meanwhile, is trying to, uh, you know, find his gun or do anything. And just, uh, how engaged I am with that scene every time I see it, it's just, uh, incredible and, uh, absolutely horrendous at the same time. Um, and then once Neville is able to take Sam back, again, credit to the dog for, you know, what they did putting um, stuff that wouldn't really uh, mess with the dog system or anything on its fur and, you know, I mean, do different things to sort of be more limp and such. I don't want to go into that too much, but um, Robert gets gets her back to the, the lab he has at his house. And yeah, so the, uh, the uh, vaccine and everything he's working on hasn't really been tested right for animals yet. And unfortunately, I can't work on her, so he just kind of sits there with her and it's a really uh, heartbreaking resonant scene there and she is infected so he ends up having to uh you know, find some way to put her put her out of that um and yeah that's when the whole movie completely you know changes um and just uh i gotta talk about will smith's performance um again the best performance i've ever seen from him the emotion the loneliness the uh anger and just sort of grief that he lashes out with after that it's i think it's really great and uh, it bothers me i didn't really get more credit for it and also rob or uh, will smith actually wanted to adopt the dog 
um, you know, who played Sam in the movie, but I guess the trainer wasn't willing to part with it or something. I just think it kind of speaks to, you know, how good their scenes actually were and such. And I really like the backstory that was laid out for even more of his attachment to the dog, for what happened to his family. Um, I don't know if it, I don't know if Zara was played by his real life daughter or... Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, Willow Smith actually played his daughter in the movie Marley when you see her in the flashbacks. And I thought all the flashbacks were really well done really nice and really well handled as well. And what happened to them when they were going on the uh, helicopter to get out of the uh, you know, quarantine zone before the city's closed down. Um, the, the bridge is literally blown apart. Uh, really tragic and how they added that into uh, you know, different bits of Will Smith you know, thinking about throughout the movie to that you know, pivotal scene after what happens to Sam. You know, I thought it was really, really... Uh, <sighs> Just hit home nicely for me, and still, it's one of my one of those scenes I won't really forget either. Um, and then uh, when we talk about the more mixed aspects, I guess, or I don't really have a lot of issues with this movie. If anything, there are gripes for how much I like the book. And as far besides Lowe's, I don't have any issues with the movie itself on its own. Um, but the uh, Dark Seekers. Um, this is a picture of the Alpha one, but the CG is a bit dated on them, admittedly. I mean, it was almost 12 years ago now. It, I remember seeing it in theaters, and it was, you know, pretty good at the time, you know, f you know, fairly realistic, at least enough, you know, for 07. Um, and it's not, it's not like the worst you'll ever see. Um, oddly, there are still, you know, worse movies where, where with the worst effects that'll come out right now. But I acknowledge they are, uh, bit on the dated side and they are mutants uh, they, they still have this uh, you know distaste for daylight and it does hurt them and everything um, so they still have some of the vampire elements in there to some extent and you know they can still get infected you know they can still infect people with bites and everything but you know they're not really vampires I think it actually would have worked better if they had kept the mutants as just straight up vampires because in the books there's like a lot of uh, well, there's dialogue with certain vampires and how manipulative they try to be, and they're even more kind of cunning and smart in this, but, you know, they want a different sort of, uh, contagion, I guess, realistic route with this, I suppose. Um, but, you know, I, I would just prefer straight-up vampires in this, honestly, but it's not too bad, and there's still a really good, uh, tone with when they, the, when these things are on screen and when they attack, it's, there's a good, like, rush, and I still really enjoy it. <coughs> And then uh, we gotta talk about Alice Bragg a little bit too, who I, who I always thought was pretty good in this movie. Um, you know, she's a survivor. I'm guessing most of you have seen this movie by now, but you know, she's a survivor who had actually heard a lot of uh, Neville's, you know, broadcasts. You know, every there he'll be there every day at dawn. But of course, the day she finally shows up, he's late because of what's happening with Sam and everything. Um, but I thought she was pretty good as well. She's on that Queen of the South so, uh, South show on USA right now. Um, I actually want to see her in more. I always thought she was quite good in this. Um, and then one of my other favorite scenes is just a little moment. And again, it speaks to Will Smith's performance in this movie where he's uh, basically uh, scavenging you know, different houses or apartments. And he comes into this uh, this room, you know, this, this kid's room. and. I think that's one of those moments where he thinks back with a flashback and such, but this is expression, it's... Hmm. So yeah, overall, uh, I Am Legend, it's, it could be one of my favorite movies of all time, and I, it's hard to say that, because you got to decipher that from what mood you're in and such. You can't just make it about a mood you're in, you have to really think about what means, what movies meant the most to you when it comes down to it. Um, you know, I think of movies like, you know, The Punisher, or, uh, you know, it's hard to come up with that at the top of my head right now, but if I made like a top 10, top 15 movies of all time for me, Will Smith, or Will Smith, <laughs> I Am Legend would uh, probably be on it, I think. Uh, and honestly, I'm giving I Am Legend an A. I could rate it anywhere from a 92 to a 97%. <laughs> That's how much I love it. I've always uh, had a huge attachment and uh, fondness for this movie. I wish I had found more success, but it's always going to be one of my ones I always look back on. So yeah, then you guys thought about I Am Legend when it comes down to it. Did you like the book? Um, and also, what ending did you prefer? There's the theatrical one, and there's the uh, 
alternate one, which gives some more context to the mutants, I guess, but I think the theatrical ending actually packs more of a, you know, kind of emotionally resonant arc and more of a punch that kind of leaves you with something. Um, whereas, uh, alternate ending, while giving you some decent little details, it, it feels a little bit weaker with that, you know, final conclusion, I think. Um, it's like, in, it's interesting, but it doesn't really go, oh, well, or anything like that. So I prefer the, the, uh, the, uh, the I prefer the theatrical one, actually, uh, which is kind of rare for people to say, but, hey, it worked. So yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.